I cannot believe they posted this. <laughs> Why did they have to do this to this guy? So social media has allowed companies to interact with people at an entirely different level. Today, we're gonna to take a look at how companies came to the decision that unhinged post is the right marketing strategy. And more importantly, why these posts work. All of your favorite brands are on social media. And these companies understand that social media is the best way for them to not only engage with its customers, but also use them. Every time we click, every time we scroll, we are fed some sort of advertisement. And it wasn't always like this. Before the internet took over, companies advertise themselves in other ways. Commercials, magazines, radio, and billboards. And while these mediums are still largely used today, social media brings marketing to a completely different level. All right, so let's take a look at billboards for a second. Billboards are strategically placed on streets and highways where its visibility is at its peak. The caveat to printed media is time, money, and its location. It's only visible to those local to the area. Think about how it is today. Digital marketing has allowed companies to fully utilize globalization word. <laughs> I mean, now I can go ahead and see an ad for ramen in Japan. <laughs> and if I could, I would buy it all. Ads on the internet perfectly serve the fast-paced, bite-sized interactions that we continue to crave. The constant exposure eventually leads us to respond to their call to action. A third of the U.S. population is made up of Gen Z and Gen Alpha. The average screen time in America is 7 hours and 4 minutes per day. In 2023, Americans spent 2 hours and 14 minutes daily on social media. Soon, Gen Z and Gen Alpha will make up a large portion of the consumer population that companies can target. Well, how do they target them? I want to be where the people are by seeing what's on our screens, our data, our profiles, our preferences. All those cookies we leave behind, companies are eating them up. And what did these cookie monsters learn? First, let's take a look at two different commercials. Got extreme stains? Then you need OxyClean Laundry Stain Remover. Even fruit juices and cola come out right before your eyes. It's chlorine free, so you can trust it on all your clothes. OxyClean Laundry Stain Remover. It gets the tough stains out. This dude in his damn Tesla. Yo, bro, you can't park here. Seriously, you gotta skedaddle. You want me to call? I didn't realize you were chill like that. All right, you're good. That dude was so sick. Okay, so these two commercials are polar opposites. Immediately, the difference in tone sets the vibe of each commercial. OxyClean goes straight into persuasion mode, informative and direct. Extreme stains, then you need OxyClean laundry stain remover. Liquid Death, much more relaxed, and it tells you virtually nothing about the product. This dude in his damn Tesla. This is just to illustrate how companies have switched strategies over time. None of these commercials are bad. They each succeeded in their own right in getting people interested in their products, just each in their own way. Further research showed companies should emphasize value convenience, prioritize social responsibility, and be digitally connected. Let's talk about the platforms where all the magic happens. Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat are the go-to places for reaching millennials and Gen Z. And then there's the unhinged content. This is where brands really let loose, posting things that are unexpected or slightly crazy. It's all about catching people off guard and making them laugh. about those wild Wendy's roast sessions. Ah, ah. Or the playful banter between brands on Twitter. It's all about being bold and standing out. Generally, there's a conservative image to companies, right? When companies are posting stuff like this, there's a dissonance. That image is broken. This 
actually makes you feel like you're interacting with someone, not some big corporation. Having that connection makes you feel more inclined to use your product or service. And it's just the classic word of mouth. People are, are more susceptible to use products that are recommended by someone they know or they like. Let's talk memes. Memes are catchy. Spectacular, give me 14 of them right now. Really? Memorable and have shock value. Listen, we also grew up with memes, so we're familiar with it. It's something we understand. Memes have evolved. No, seriously. As we've cultivated internet culture, memes have leveled up. Advanced memes recall niche jokes or past memes as references. If you understand it, it almost feels like an inside joke. For those who don't, you almost feel compelled to dive deeper and see what the meaning behind it is. Considering how memes used to just appear on websites, on posting boards, but now you can see them on companies' feeds. It's hilarious. <laughs> Companies will also try to ride the trends, whether it's popular dance moves, jokes, wait a minute, or just viral video formats. No sé que they hope to open up engagement. Although it may seem like these unhinged posts are spur of a moment things, there is a method to the madness. One, understand the audience. Okay, so we got that it's geared towards mainly younger generations. And we've already discussed some of their likes and dislikes. Two, utilizing trends. The trends offer blueprints to the content that could be made. But the key is you have to act quickly in order to capitalize. Is it funny? This is the main ingredient and largely where creativity shines. Try considering these things. Is it chaotic? Does it seem out of the norm? This helps with the image dissonance of the content and the company. Is it absurd? Meaning, is it unexpected? Does it have shock value? And also, quality. Funny enough, sometimes the posts that appear to have little effort done to them work best. It adds onto the layer that it's not that serious, and just enjoy the post for what it is. And number four, of course, associate the brand. You have to tie it back to the brand to leave the association in the audience's mind to come back to it when they actually need that product or service. In today's fast-paced, information-rich world, younger generations are seeking authenticity like never before. Exposed to an unprecedented amount of information and content from a young age, we've developed a heightened awareness of global issues, social injustices, and realities behind polished facades. So this influx has made us discerning and critical consumers of media, valuing genuine, transparent, and relatable content. I think genuine is a key word here. Genuine can infer a warmth, like a genuine gift. You know, a gift that has a lot of thought and consideration into it. But in reality, genuine can also just mean something of totality. So in a world that can feel chaotic and uncertain, I think we appreciate the raw and unfiltered truth because it reflects our own realities and struggles like imp like imperfection they make content more relatable and trustworthy there's a pretty big difference from the unattainable standards set by traditional media what brands are starting to learn especially the smaller ones is the importance of building meaningful connections and that really resonates with our values and experiences companies have transitioned from hard prints to leaving behind a curated digital footprint when engaging with customers they opt for a more personalized approach by grasping their target audience and their need for bold humorous content they've leaned to unserious postings. This brings out more personality and breaks down this barrier that opens up the door for people to interact with them. Backlash a possibility? Oh, for sure. There have been several posts that have been deleted for crossing the line. It's not certain if companies will ever reel it back on their postings. For now, we might as well sit back, laugh, and continue scrolling. <laughs>